Now we're motivated to find this algorithm that allows us to do substring matching, but with the ability to carry over partial matches from one step to the next, so that we find the best, in some sense, the, the maximal substring matches between the pattern and the text. And we're going to, first of all, define um, this idea of matching statistics here in this video, and we're also going to highlight what it is about the matching statistics that allows us to find maximal matches between uh, P and T, between the pattern and the text. Then, in the next video is when we'll see how to actually compute these things efficiently using the suffix tree. And a quick comment, you know, the title of this, this uh, video has suffix trees in it, but the idea of matching statistics is not tied to suffix trees. It's useful to see it in terms of suffix trees first, but one can compute matching statistics using um, various different uh, index data structures, not just suffix trees, but also, for example, suffix arrays, which we'll see later, and uh, other data structures. Okay, so let's start again with the motivation, which is um, we want something that helps us to describe similar substrings between the pattern and the text, so that in some sense we're getting kind of like maximal substring matches between the pattern and the text. So let's define an idea that'll help us to do this, this idea of matching statistics. At each step, we're going to compute the length of the longest prefix of the suffix starting at i, starting at offset i, that occurs in t. All right, so if you sort of pick, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of p and t in a moment, and it will be easier to see what we're doing here. But we're, gonna, we're sort of marching along p left to right and asking, in some sense, how far out can I go to the right, uh, adding characters onto my match before I hit, before I can't extend it any farther? Okay, and we'll eventually talk about how to use a suffix tree to compute this. But first, let's just compute it sort of ourselves, right? So we're eventually going to use suffix trees and suffix links, but first we're just going to do it by I, using the definition. Okay, so let's start without any kind of suffix tree. Let's just find here's our here's our T and our P. I've got a longer example of a text here, abracadabra dad, and then I've got a P. And this is the array MS, that's going to be where we put our matching statistics. What are the matching statistics? Well, at each step i, we want the length of the longest prefix of the suffix starting at i that occurs in t. Okay, so let's do this step by step. We'll start, of course, with step one. We'll start our indexing at one in this, in this particular example. Okay, so what is the length of the longest prefix of the suffix p, i, up to the end that occurs in t? Okay, what suffix are we talking about? We're talking about the whole string in this case, right? i is equal to 1, um, and so p, let's say that p, this is sort of a mashup of Python notation. Uh, this is saying the entire string, the string from offset 1 on assuming 1 based offsets. Okay. Assume one based for now. Okay, so what's the length of the longest prefix of this that occurs in T? All right, well, let's see. There's the prefix consisting of just the character C. Does that occur in T? Yes, so there are C's in the text T. So, okay, good. So it's going to be length at least one. But let's keep going. Maybe there's a CA in the text. If there's a CA in the text, then the matching statistic goes up by one. So let's see, are there any instances of CA in the text? Yes, I see one right there. Okay, let's see if we can keep going. CAR. Are there any instances of CAR in the text? No. No. There's only one C, in fact, and we can see that it's followed, while it is followed by A, the next character is not R. So no, that, that prefix, C-A-R, of the suffix does not occur. So the length of the longest one that does occur is 2, right? C-A was the longest one we found. So the length of the longest one we found is 2. So 2 goes here in the first slot of our matching statistics array, and that corresponds to this identical substring between P and T. We cannot extend it to the right any farther. That would cause a mismatch. Okay. Good. Well, that was the first step, the step i equals 1. We can now proceed. We can do the next step, i equals 2. We'll do, of course, exactly the same thing. We'll start with the a that we have here, right, which is the first 
um, the, the first prefix of the suffix starting at offset i equals 2. Okay, so we've got that a. Does a occur in t? Yeah, a actually occurs several places in t, so it's definitely going to be length at least one. So, okay, let's see, does a r occur in t? a r? Um, no, it doesn't, right? There's a bunch of a's, but none of them have r's after them. So no, I'm afraid that length 2 prefix of the suffix doesn't occur. Only the length 1 prefix occurs, so we're going to put a 1 in this second position here. Okay, corresponding to, you know, this match, the match between this A and any A in here. I highlighted one of them, but really it matches all of them, all of the A's in the text T. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to step 3. Let's see what's the longest prefix of uh, this suffix that occurs in T. Well, let's start with just R. Yep, R occurs. Let's go on to RA. Yep, I see some RAs. So yeah, RA occurs like there, for example. So, so far, so good. RAD. Uh, yeah, I see an RAD all the way over here in the text T. So yeah, so far, so good. RADA. Yep, I can extend this to the right by one, and I've got to match RADA to RADA. Okay, how about R-A-D-A-D? Yep. How about R-A-D-A-D-A? -A -A? No, right? So I can't extend this any farther. I can't extend this any farther. So the length of the longest prefix that has a match in T is 5. I'm going to put a 5 right there, and it corresponds to that match, R-A-D-A-D, -A -A between the two. Okay. How about the next one? Let's see. Again, let's see, does A occur? Yes. Does A, D occur? Yeah. Does A, D, A occur? You can actually see I'm finding matches that kind of overlap with the last one I found, right? R, A, D, A, D. I'm going to find A, D, A, D in this case, and then I'm not going to be able to extend any farther, right? A, D, A, D, and then there's no room. So I'm going to end up with 4 as the length of the matching statistic here, right? And... Let's fill in the rest. I'm going to do this somewhat more quickly. Okay, so I think DAD is the longest in this case, so that's going to be a 3. Let's go here. A, yeah, that occurs. AD, ADA occurs. ADA, BR, they all occur, right? Like this whole thing occurs actually right there, sort of right opposite. Uh, and then there's a mismatch after that, right? So I guess this next one is going to be 5 again. Okay, let me actually get rid of this stuff. This is going to be a 5. Uh, that's going to be a 4, 3, 2, 1, and then another 1. Those are all our matching statistics. And if you want to, you can just sort of by eye confirm all that. Okay? So there we go. That's our array of matching statistics. At each step, we computed the length of the longest prefix of the suffix starting at i that occurs in t. Okay, so it's, ma it's maximal in one sense already, right? It's maximal in the sense that we write in the length of the longest prefix of the suffix starting at i uh, that matches with respect to t. But I want to talk about another sense in which we can get maximal matches out of these matching statistics. First, let's just visualize the matching statistics a different way. I'm going to draw now like a diagrammatic version of these matching statistics where I've got my, you know, step I here corresponding to, you know, the steps that we use to fill in the MS array. And I've got the height corresponding to the number, right? So the longer the matching statistic, the higher it's going to be plotted on this plot here. And so I'm just going to plot like, you know, for example, this two here is going to be like, I'm going to shade in that square, and this one here I'm going to shade in that square, etc. And I'm going to get a picture that looks like this. All right, so it's like a up and down picture of how long the matching statistics are. Um, if you look at it in a sort of right to left direction, you can see it's got this, it's got this sort of telltale shape of starting low and then climbing, 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 climbing one by one by one as we're able to ex sort of extend a match farther and further and then oops jumps back down but then oop, climbs back up but then oop, jumps back down this kind of sawtooth pattern of up and then down and then up and then down diagonal up straight down diagonal up straight down is kind of the characteristic pattern 
that you see when you examine a matching statistics array. But now, looking at this picture, I want you to think of, in particular, the so-called peaks in the picture, the peaks in the matching statistics, by which I mean, as we go right to left, the instances where the next matching statistic to the left is not greater than the one to the right. right? If the one to the left is not greater, or there is none to the left, then that corresponds to a peak in the matching statistics. So for example, this being all the way to the left, it has no neighbor to the left. So I'm going to call that a peak. Right? So there's one peak. That peak corresponds to what we're going to call a well, what, what is called a maximal exact match, or MEM. Okay? A maximal exact match is a match between P and T that cannot be made longer. Right? In other words, if you tried to make it longer on the right side or you tried to make it longer on the left side, you would run into a mismatch and it would no longer be a match between P and T. A maximal exact match is a match between P and T an exact match between P and T that cannot be extended to either side without causing a mismatch. In particular, this matching statistic corresponds to a match of CA between P and T, which as you can see, we can't extend. We can't extend it to the left in P because there's no because we fell off the left end, and we can't extend it to the right because this R mismatches this D. Okay? So that peak corresponds to a match that is a special kind of match, which is to say it's a maximal exact match, or a MEM. Okay? Let's keep looking at our peaks. There's another peak over here. This is a matching statistic that does not go up as we go to the left. Right? It goes down. So that's another peak. We can look at that substring match between P and T and see that it's also maximal. Right? So this is RADAD matching RADAD. We can't extend it to the right because we fall off T. We also can't extend it to the left because the A and B would mismatch. So that's a MEM. That's a maximal exact match between P and T. All right, next peak over is this one here. That also corresponds to a MEM. Pretty easy to see. We can't extend it any farther, left or right. So that's a MEM. And then the next peak, technically this one over here is also a peak, again, because it does not go up as we go to the left. So that one's, you know, a, not a big peak, it's a little peak, but it's still a peak, and it still means that it's a maximal exact match. It cannot be extended to the left or right. It can't be extended to the right because we'd fall off the pattern. It can't be extended to the left because none of those are R's, right? There's no opportunity. There's no, there's no RD anywhere in the, in the text, so we can't extend that to the left. Okay? So not only are the matching statistics maximal in the sense that at each step we're finding the maximal prefix of the suffix that occurs in T. But if we go into the final matching statistics array and point our finger at all those peaks in the matching statistics, there's another, we're finding uh, particular substrings that are extra special. They're maximal exact matches or MEMS, which means that they cannot be, the match cannot be extended in either direction, left or right. So to summarize what we saw, a way to describe how well substrings of the pattern match substrings of the text is using matching statistics. Note that matching statistics do not care, they don't require that we tell them how long an important match is, like how long is a good match. Right? It's not like, for example, the Kamer index idea where we had to pick a value for k before we could even build the Kamer index in the first place. And we would you know, presumably we would pick K according to some notion of how long a good or significant match is between two sequences. The notion of matching statistics doesn't need us to tell it ahead of time how long is a good match. It just goes ahead and finds the maximal ones, however long they are. It doesn't matter how long they are, it'll find them. So it is a useful method in that sense. We don't have to tell it what length match it's finding, it just goes ahead and finds the longest ones it can. The peaks in the matching statistics array, right, which we visualized as having that sawtooth pattern, are the maximal exact matches, the ones that can't be extended farther in either direction. If you tried to, you would get a mismatch. So that's another important way 
that matching statistics help us. Once we know the matching statistics, we also know where the MEMS are and how, and how long they are. Okay, and that's what makes matching statistics and MEMS and the sort of ideas that we, all the ideas in this uh, package of suffix links, matching statistics, MEMS, these are all very useful ideas for such applications as whole genome alignment, right, comparing two entire genome sequences, read alignment in genomics, which is to say trying to find where a short sequence ma best matches a longer sequence, and just approximate matching in general. It doesn't have to be for genomics, right? I showed that example using a poem at the beginning. It could be in any situation where you have very large sequences, they might have good long approximate matches and a good way to start to look for those approximate matches are to try to find the longest exact matches you can and matching statistics are helpful with that. So next we're going to see what's the actual algorithm for computing this MS array not by eye like we did it here in this video but actually using the suffix tree and we want to argue that that is an efficient algorithm.